My name is Gokul. I'm from Hotwired, uh, and I'm going to be talking more about the engineering notebook. So why would you focus on the engineering notebook? Well, for, uh, for our team, when we started out in our first year and pretty much the first half of the second year, uh, our engineering notebook was pretty subpar. We didn't put that much time into it. We just, you know, we, we thought of it as a requirement more than a way to show what we've done throughout the season. Uh, and about halfway through the second year, um, a judge actually came up to us and told us that our engineering notebook needed a little work. You know, we were kind of confused. We weren't getting any nominations or awards. Uh, and basically, we took this as uh, him saying that it was a little crappy, so we needed to, you know, make it better. Uh, so once we developed our engineering notebook and really made it shine and show all the work that we put in throughout the season, uh, we ended up winning, you know, multiple Inspire Awards uh, throughout the season uh, last year. So this just shows how much, uh, of imp how much importance it holds. So here's a table that actually is provided in the game manual, the first part. Uh, so it just shows which parts of the engineering notebook are required for each award. So as you can see, literally every award except for Motivate requires the engineering notebook and takes a part of it into consideration. So if you don't have a really solid engineering notebook or if you don't even have one at all, uh, your, you know, your chance of winning these awards is going to be really slim. So you want to make sure you have a really strong and complete engineering notebook. So, you know, the main purpose of the engineering notebook, Rowan talked about this uh, already, but, you know, it's to tell your team's story and instead of being repetitive and giving like a step-by-step -step overview of what you did every meeting, you really want to tell uh, the story of the challenges your team faced and the steps you took to overcome them. Uh, and you can kind of fill in the gaps of your judging presentation because, you know, the judges can ask which, whatever questions they want to, but the engineering notebook is something you can kind of fully control and make sure, you know, that it's solid before you give it to the judges. So uh, this is the must-haves or the basic requirements of the engineering notebook uh, according to the game manual. Uh, so basically, you need to have the team number and name on the cover. You need a summary page, including you know a basic overview of your season. Uh, you need a good body of the engineering notebook, which has multiple sections, including an engineering section, a team section, and a business plan. So this is what our cover page looked like, and right next to you, you see our summary page. So uh, this uh, excerpt is actually taken from the judges manual provided by FTC. Uh, so this is what the judges will look at to, you know, uh, go through your engineering notebook. This is their guidelines. And here it says that the engineering notebook won't even be considered unless you include the team number and name on the cover. So making sure you have these basic requirements is actually pretty crucial because, you know, it might end up, you know, all the work you put in might end up being ignored just because of some of these basic requirements. And here you can see our summary page. Uh, so the first section on the left uh, is the robot, which basically just gives a highlight of some of the features and components of the robot. And on the right, you have the outreach uh, activities that you do throughout the season. So those two sections will probably be there at the beginning of the season, because uh, hopefully you did most of your outreach over the summer. And once you built your robot, you can talk about both of those things. But as the season progresses, hopefully you're you know, winning a couple of awards or making some achievements or achieving some goals that your team set. So you can put that in. Uh, the summary page as well as the season progresses. So this is the major sections that our teams uh, personally included in our engineering notebook. So we had a team section, uh, we showed our journey, uh, had an engineering design section, which was basically just you know an overview of all of our meetings. Uh, but we also included uh, information about our control systems, including you know code snippets, and pretty much all of our code. Uh, and then we also included some PTC drawings and models. Uh, and of course, you have to have an outreach section where you talk about everything you've done to you know, promote first and spread the word. And lastly, there's a business plan. So we'll go through examples of each of these. So here's the engineering design section. Uh, so you want to really show your robot design process and you know, all, any programming and code that you used for your autonomous IntelliUp. Uh, and a really important thing to consider is having a lot of pictures and sketches, as you can see uh, over here. Uh, because, you know, the judges aren't going to get that much time to look at your engineering notebook initially. So you want something to catch their eye. And, you know, a quick way to show your work is just by uh, putting, including a couple of simple graphics. So anytime your team makes any kind of, you know, drawing to uh, design a part, you want to make sure to include it in the engineering notebook. 
Uh, and also, if you do PTC or CAD, you can include screenshots of that. And if you use MathCAD or any software for calculations, you should include that too. So here is an example of more pictures. And on the right is our PTC concept designs. So uh, another software that PTC provides, aside from you know, Creo Parametric, which is what you use to model in a lot of cases, is MathCAD. Uh, and we actually use this to do a majority of our calculations. Uh, I mean, it's great because it's free. Uh, and you know, your engineering notebook already has the technology and engineering sections of STEM, but you want to include the science and math to make it really complete. So showing your calculations are very, is very important. And MathCAD is really easy to learn. Uh, it does a lot of work for you. you know. Uh, it does conversion, scientific notation. So yeah, I would definitely recommend picking up MathCAD. So here's our outreach section. Uh, it's pretty straightforward in terms of you know what what you want to include in the outreach section. You want to have you know how you promoted first in ORTOP, how you uh, did outreach to the community, how you engaged with professionals, uh, how you interacted with other teams, and even any you know hosting or volunteering that you did at tournaments. And one thing that we realized as uh, we you know, got through the second year of robotics was that we really wanted to highlight the impact of each of these outreach events. So instead of just giving a summary of what you did there, you want to you know, give some numbers and data points and show how many people you reached, how many teams you reached, and how many hours you put in. Because those are the things that really stand out and you know, show the judges the results of your outreach. Uh, so in terms of the business plan, you know, the main point is to show the goals for the season, whether it be team goals like design or outreach goals or funding goals, which is pretty much the main point of the business plan. Uh, so you want to include sp sponsors and outreach partners in there. You also want to have kind of a plan or a timeline of how you're going to achieve your goals and funding throughout the season. And I, I put SWOT analysis there because uh, at the World Championships last, uh, last season, the judges, you know, after talking extensively about our robot and outreach to them, uh, after you know several pit judging sessions, one thing they kind of nitpicked on at the end was a SWOT analysis. Uh, this is basically just strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So little things like this can be really important to you know put your engineering notebook above other teams' uh, you know standards. So you need to include a SWOT analysis in your business plan, uh, and also you want to show any grants that you applied for. Uh, you know, like PTC grant or any uh, education grants, and you want to show the process of applying and whether or not you receive them. Uh, so in terms of judging, how much time do you think the judges have to actually, you know, take an initial look at the engineering notebook? Anyone? Yeah, so um, they're not going to have that much time to take an initial, you know, they, they have a really busy schedule. They have to look at one team after another. So they're not going to have that much time to take an initial look at your engineering notebook, which is why you want to include a lot of sketches and make it look really nice and have it stand out so that they can pass it on to judges to take a more in-depth look. Um, yeah, so... Judging is obviously hard and can be tedious, uh, but you want to make it as easy as possible for the judges. One thing you have to keep in mind is, you know, not only do they do the team interviews, they you know review engineering notebooks and observe matches, but when they finally have to choose the top three teams for each award, um, they actually have to you know talk to each other. Uh, you're not going to necessarily interact with every single judge that's present at the competition. So you want to make sure that the judges who know you have something to represent you with. So make sure to include you know, colored tabs uh, on your engineering notebook that refer to awards so that they can easily be like, you know, uh, here, this is why they uh, are a good contender for the control award, and they can easily flip to it in your engineering notebook. And we also use a handout every year that has a summary of you know, everything that can be judged, basically. Uh, so this is also great because they can show the other judges uh, during their roundtable discussion. Gokul was just mentioning 
to be considered for the control award, you need a control award content sheet. And every year, FTC provides one of the example content sheets on their website. So if you just go to like team resources, I think is the tab, they'll have um, the Word document for the content sheet available for you to put your information into. And in this sheet, you'll, um, you'll yeah, you're gonna want to put in like the sensor you sensors you used in autonomous and teleop, how you use these sensors, what algorithms you used with the sensors, and just in general like your control strategy and different points of the control systems in your robot. The question was how do we basically put together all the informa uh, all the entries that people do? So obviously, you know, at the beginning of the season, you're gonna split up into different teams to do different. Uh, tasks, whether it's relating to the robot or outreach. And hopefully the team leads will be writing entries about what they do, because uh, they know the most about it. But you want to make sure to have one or two people who are in charge of the engineering notebook to kind of format and put together all this information. So what we do is we basically, you know, we have like a Google Docs with uh, just the basic drafts of all the entries. Uh, so all the team members can upload it to, you know, that doc. But the final version is actually made in Microsoft Word. So we take those entries and kind of format them and make them look better. So first of all, we have a handout, which is it's just basically a big laminated handout that we use, uh, not only for judging, but you know during pit judging and to give to the judges. It just has like um, some of the data points that I was talking about. You know, it has all our outreach events categorized into you know several categories, and it has you know the numbers of teams we reach and the numbers of hours we put in. And you know, we also have a lot of pictures of our robot evolution throughout the season. Uh, but in terms of the actual sheet that we include in our engineering notebook. Uh, we actually have like a sheet at the front of the engineering notebook that has uh, that's split up into the different awards. You saw that table earlier. So uh, there's a lot of requirements for each of these awards, and we basically have like color coded tabs uh, for each of these requirements categorized into the awards. So it just makes it easier for them to look through it. Did you bring your engineering notebook? No. Okay. Come here. Okay. So Kathy Sweeter, right here. That's it. Um, as the affiliate partner for Oregon, no, no, you're not going anywhere, stay right here. As the affiliate partner for the state of Oregon, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of the engineering notebook. This is the one area as teams come in and they, it's important that when you show up at the registration desk, you have it ready to turn in because as soon as you do, we have runners to take it back to the judging rooms so they can start, have that opportunity to read them. The longer it takes for you to hold, uh, hold, that you hold on to it and not give it to us, is longer time that you're, the Joe's judges can't have the opportunity to read your notebook. And I'm going to put Hotwired on the spot for a little bit. In 2013, your first season, what happened? What was your end result? Um, <laughs> we got to the world championships, and we had a really strong robot, so we ended up winning the um, robot competition. Yeah, you were the first winning alliance captain of the winning team at the world championship. Awesome. What happened in your second year? Um, um, let's, let's say at the state championships. What happened there? Uh, so at the state championships, uh, I think we, we were kind of, you know, kind of overconfident and we didn't take everything too seriously in terms of judging. We could have done a lot better and uh, our engineering notebook, as I talked about, wasn't as strong as it could have been. Uh, so, you know, our robot had some electrical issues and in the uh, quarterfinals, we actually ended up getting eliminated. And then at the actual, you know, award ceremony, we weren't uh, nominated for a single award. And we basically were, you know, one spot away from qualifying. Uh, it, it was just like, you know, one of those next team, highest rank not to qualify, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and one team ended up not being able to go, so we got a second chance, uh, and we went to Super Regionals. I think it's safe to say, had they had a competent engineering notebook and could have been considered for awards, you could have avoided that unfortunate situation. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So what was the result last year? Did you up your game on that engineering notebook? Yeah. And what was the, the final result for your team? Uh, so as we went through, we started winning uh, some of the top three Inspire Awards, and eventually at Worlds, we won Inspire. So. Won the Inspire Award at World. OK. There can be no better testimony for a competent 
and well put together engineering notebook because that is the key to your success. Thank you very much.